Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video. I am Rob, and today we have something a little bit special, a little bit different. Um, I've never actually heard of this brand before. It's the Gamda Core Sabre. I think that's how it's pronounced. The Gamda Core Sabre. Uh, this is the Chevelle Station. So not even Chevelle Station Wagon, just the Chevelle Station. Made in Israel, and it's... Uh, I think it's number 8100. But anyway, a large casting, a very cool casting. The Chevelle, I believe from 1964, uh, this model. And uh, yeah, a beautiful design car. Very simple, really, in its design. Boxy, but hey, perfect for families. Perfect for those weekends away and grossy grocery getter and, and such. But uh, I would love this car in real life. But anyway, I'm going to try and... You know, tickle it today, and with 2,000 likes, this one could be yours. But here is the car in question. It does have some UN decals on it. They shan't be staying today. But yeah, I've done a little bit of research. Seems like uh, during the 60s, this company was around over in Israel, and uh, they made quite a few different models. But yeah, as you can see, reading underneath there, Gamdecor Sabre, and then the 6100 Chevelle Station. We've got four rivets on this one. Absolute pig to get these rivets off. Every single one was a nightmare. And uh, we won't be drilling, well, we won't be replacing them with uh, screws today. This one will be UV glued back together. And it looks perfect, to be honest. But anyway comes apart quite easy and the main cast in there it's not the greatest of quality but it's not bad the as you can see the post here I think uh, a little bit small on the back this one blew out on the side here but yeah not the best but certainly not the worst The window section here. Thankfully, no deep gouges. And it was actually, I didn't even spot it. There is a slight crack in it. You can't really see it once it's inside the model, but it is certainly there, which I'll show a little bit later on. Lovely bit of detail on that rear hatch. And the interior. The steering wheel there. It's a little bit on the wonk, so I'll straighten that up. And there we are. The interior is actually not too bad. Quite thick plastic. You know, some of the ones of the similar size, like the dinkies, are paper thin. This one, yeah, it's got some quality to it. Although the base, very flimsy. A little bit on the uh, cheaper side. But we're able to take these wheels and axles out quite easily and save them. And they're kind of like a dinky style. It's dinky size and style. I guess in the 60s, this kind of Israeli company probably looked toward dinky and kind of lightly copied them. But uh, with plastic bases instead. But I considered the foot long today, but I changed my mind, mainly due to time. It was quite late in the evening, and my wife kind of said, oh, do you want this, uh, you know, this pot? And I said, yeah, I think that would be quite handy for stripping cars, you know, overnight. Usually, I like to strip the paint off pretty quick, and then get on with the painting. And because, like I say, it was getting on a little bit kind of uh, late in the evening, I thought, well, I'll do i put this in the stripper and I'll leave it overnight and I'll tackle it the following evening. So this stripper I've had for some time. It used to flow a lot easier than what it is today. It's kind of a little bit gloopy now. It's getting towards the end of its life, I guess. And I was wondering whether it would do anything at all. So I thought what I'll do... I'll cover the casting here, 
forget about it for 24 hours and then come back to it in the hope that this paint you know would have uh, removed but actually to my kind of astonishment really as you could see the paint is instantly coming off and with that moment I know that my late night was about to get much later and that actually maybe I will get this one into paint tonight I've had some mixed results with this uh, paint stripper but as you can see this one is really doing its business and I will give it the time rider shake for luck and put it to one side and I'm gonna deal with the plastics then kind of let that do its thing for a, for a short period and then I'm going to clean up these plastics. Obviously larger than your usual. So I'll give it the, uh, the clean up there. And this interior looking really good. And I'm not going to muck around with this one today. I'm going to put that to one side. The base here though does need a fresh coat of silver paint. So I'll put that over there. And then the windscreen here. I'll use my uh, Lamp Doctor plastic polish and then start polishing this uh, window section up. As you can see a single pass over that is coming up pretty shiny and after going over it a couple of times yeah really happy with her how this uh, window section come out you can just about see on that left hand side there there is a crack now majority of that kind of sinks below the windowsill so you can't see any of it really but we know it's uh, now there but for the base we're using the matte silver from the pound shop can you believe it? I had so uh, much of this paint. The silver I've got plenty, but the matte black I've run, I've run out of. And you know, normally I would never even thought about it or considered it, but of course the shops are closed, and I can't get out. So uh, for any other matte black stuff that's needed coming up, I'm going to have to come up with a different solution. But anyway looking all right there in the silver and I'll uh, add some chrome back on those front and rear bumpers but yeah that should uh, dry off pretty nice and yeah the paint stripper there done a pretty good job uh, it's not as good as caustic soda but I'm glad I used it tonight for something different and I'm gonna buff out the bonnet here I do find that burnishing or polishing the metalwork after paint stripping uh, it, it never leaves it as, as shiny if I hadn't actually gone with the um, caustic soda the caustic soda seems to do something to it you know it, it comes out and it's all dull but you polish it afterwards and it looks beautiful I always find with paint strippers no matter how much I try to you know rub it down or polish it up it just doesn't have that same kind of shine you know it's alright it looks alright there but anyway having done it all over I'll be using the black primer today and like I say it's not a very shiny I did kind of um, use some 1200 grit as well 
and I've got some IPA panel wipe just to make sure that there's no grime left on it before I start painting. This is another thing that I am struggling to get hold of, the Viejo black primer that I'm very fond of. I usually, well, it's very difficult to get hold of in the first place. And I found one seller in the UK and uh, their shop's closed as well. So again, I don't know, probably have to keep to the, uh, to the other stuff. But yeah, paint wise, now I went to my Facebook page and I went to the uh, community tab on YouTube, but also to my Patreon page. And I asked, what color would you like to see this car? And of course there was, you know, many different colors. A couple uh, stood out from the crowd. And one was a, a light green, like a light metallic green, which I thought was a great idea. Uh, but the other color was the kind of, I guess copperish color um, that was the same color as the picture that I showed and I never even considered that color I thought you know it's a bit maybe a bit boring a bit plain um, but supposedly that particular color was the prototype color so this kind of interested me you know even more so and I thought well can we create it today but with a, a base of yellow a little touch of red little touch of silver and coming up a little touch of black I think we get pretty close so you can see here I'm only going to add a couple of drops of black and what a difference this makes Yeah, if you refer back to the picture that I showed on Facebook or YouTube or Patreon page, we've just, you know, splurging some colours there. Hey, it's pretty close. It was more luck than judgment, but, you know, we take the luck where we can get it. But anyway, the base coat here nice and dry and then we'll hit it up with this uh, Vallejo mix this one off colour never to be created again this paint really does go brilliantly over the black primer you know being a light color you think it would be much better over the white primer but I just find that the with the white primer it just takes that you know a few extra covers of of uh, of this top coat to actually cover it is odd I, I don't really understand it I was always kind of under the impression use a dark base coat for dark colours and a light cunt, you know, a light base coat for light colours, but it just seems with this particular paint, this uh, premium range in metallic, it just loves this uh, black undercoat. But yeah, that's the first coat and I'll, uh, I'll add a second coat and some clear as well. But it is the following day. So there's the interior there looking as good as new and of course reminding you the steering wheel is now straight this window section gleaming for some reason you can just see on that left hand side there seems to be a couple of marks I don't know where they come from but yeah they seem to have burnt into the plastic maybe from the I, I don't even know where how but yeah the uh, paint there looking beautiful 
and the little tower gate. The base there now dry, chromed out the front and rear bumpers, and the wheels back in position. But I'm going to put it back together, add a few little further details. But here is a reminder of what she looked like. And this is the result. So around the front there you can see some headlights painted in. And just about on that bonnet, or that hood, the Chevrolet sign chromed in. Coming around the side here. Obviously those wheels are perfect uh, stance to this car I think. A little bit of chrome on the door handles there. And also the trim on that fender. Coming around the rear. Keeping it simple. Just a little bit of chrome on that uh, door hatch handle. Plus in the Chevrolet sign. But yeah, you can just about see this. Almost like a couple of little spots on the glass on the left hand side. Don't know where they come from, but... I don't think they come off, unfortunately. But yeah, very classy car, I think. Remember, though, with 2,000 likes, it could be yours. But it, let me just take this opportunity to thank my amazing patrons. And thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Hopefully you liked it. And hopefully I'll see you on the next one.